And, and I'm going to come close to say this one because this is very important and I want you to hear it. Kicks are the wrestling of striking. Last week I made a video about some of the biggest mistakes that karate people make when they get into sparring with other kickboxing styles. But today we're going to talk about what the good things that you can take away from karate that kind of give you an advantage in any sort of kickboxing type fashion. Without further ado, let's talk about the first thing which is this unorthodox stance here. Now not this one, this is just because. You'll see a bunch of different karate guys that either assume like different stances, whether it's like this and it's Kyokushin, or it's like this and it's point karate, or if it's like this and it's Shotokan, right? You got the Lyoto Machida. It all gives a bunch of different weird looks that people just straight up aren't used to. And when you can give different looks like this and you can like be here or you can be like straight up pressure and just dogging on somebody, then you can have some sort of type advantage, if you will, if you're like a, a Pokemon nerd or whatever. When it comes to Kyokushin and like their different style like this, it comes down to pressure and just constant movement and body conditioning. And then when it comes to like the sport karate stuff, it allows for a faster in and out movement. And when you can do things like that and you can give a different look, you can do what I call pattern breaking. And pattern breaking looks like this. Every time this guy comes in, check, one, bang, right? I throw that. Every time he comes in, I go like this. Check, bang, bang. Well, the cool part about like sport karate and other different styles of karate is that it's designed to not get into a flow, right? When it comes to self-defense purposes, you don't want to like do the same thing over and over again, like trying to end it. You're trying to go from start to end of the fight pretty fast. Same thing goes for like the sport karate stuff. You want to go from not touching each other at all to touching and then getting away, right? When it comes to Kyokushin, it is a little bit more pattern based where they kind of go da 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 because they're kind of always going. It's like a constant pressure where they're always coming in and throwing these different things at your body and kicking you in the head and stuff like that. They will break the pattern every now and then and still go with like a rolling thunder. Which is exactly what I'm talking about, having those things that switch it up. And most styles have that, but I think karate has more than usual. And a lot of those things that come from those pattern breaking actually, in fact, come from your kicks. And your kicks are going to be your third we talk about, and arguably the most important. When I was growing up and learning karate, I learned... Thirteen kicks. That's a lot of kicks. There's a lot of variation when it comes to kickboxing. They stick with the roundhouse kick and the front kicks, which makes sense. Everything is either a front kick or a roundhouse kick. Everything. But think about it this way. When I have the ability to keep somebody at bay and you don't know what's coming with my longest, strongest target from an area that you can't hit me in a way that most people aren't even used to. And, and I'm going to come close to say this one because this is very important and I want you to hear it. Kicks are the wrestling of striking. And I know at first that sounds weird, but hear me out. Wrestling is super useful and super important because there's so many different facets to it if you do it right, but then also because the average person absolutely has no idea what to do with their legs, just like the average person doesn't know how to wrestle. They think they have like some basic understanding of how to throw hands because everybody's like, yo, I can fight. But wrestling? Uh-uh. Nobody knows how to wrestle unless you have spend time wrestling, and especially the same thing for kicks. Ask a random person how to throw a kick. Ask a random person, they can throw a front kick, and then other than that, toast. So being able to be like here, and go bang, and then take that same leg, and go bang, and then take that same leg, and go bang, and then bang, and then you can be like, oh, well guess what, I got that, and I got this, and then I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got this, and you have so many different options. Oh, it makes me so excited. And again, we mentioned this before, but, Longest, strongest target. If you can keep somebody at bay, keep somebody away, it's a huge factor to how good you are at fighting. Which brings up my next point, keeping somebody away. Number four is distance management. Distance management's very important. You don't always want some dude hugging up on you like this and, and hitting you with his, his wrestling nonsense or whatever. So if somebody's up in your grill like this, now Kyokushin guys can get away with this kind of stuff and they, they get a lot better at it. But they're also still controlling that distance to an extent. I mentioned this before. We want to come in, touch, and then get out. 
it started as a way to be like, okay, I need to hit you without getting hit. So it kind of like advanced into a way that was like not advanced, where we like we started like barely touching each other. I don't want to talk about that so much. When you do it right and you add contact, being able to work from a super far range because of this unorthodox stance we talked about before. So here, watch this, ready? Here is this wall. I put up my Muay Thai stance. Now here is the closest this guy can get to me. If I go more of like a karate stance, like even if it's Shotokan, here's my stance. Or if or our style of karate, we learned this stance here for like self-defense purposes, this one. Or if you go sport karate, it's way out here. So what I'm doing is I'm constantly putting my targets further away from whoever's trying to touch me, right? Being able to touch and keep someone at bay for longer is gonna be what gives you the time to react and do something back. Now, what you have to do is you have to get used to this stance and then being able to hit hard doing it. But it's not impossible, people do it all the time. It just takes a little bit of tweaking, you know? A little bit of tweaking. And while we kind of talked about this before, our point number and number six, karate can do this so well because a lot of its strikes are super long in nature. I mean, think about it. We go from like these beginner basics where it's here and we work on extending and using our hip rotation. Okay, so this hip rotation that we have and being able to create a lot of force in a small amount of area, one, it gives us longer strikes, but two, it gives us more impact in between, right? We talk about like the the keyman and stuff like that, but all that is is a way to help you understand, okay, this hand has to come back. In my opinion, that's how I teach it. You might teach it the other way and be like, oh, it's always a wrist grab, it's always this, always that. Nothing's always anything. But being able to work on making really, really long strikes, and if you can keep your body in a good place while you get these long strikes, like jabs, or like the crosses, and having those deep stances that allow for really long attacks, Longer strikes, more distance, just like the distance management we talked about earlier. Now, part seven is gonna go with it. Might be part, hold on. This is something that actually most styles do pretty well, but it's still gonna help you regardless. It's gonna be a point that you're not missing out on, is the framing. A lot of guys, when it comes to karate, have like a good frame, whether it's with the front hand, whether it's with both hands, whether it's with the legs, whatever the frame is that keeps you from getting buckled. The like, the good sturdy base. It's something the karate guys do really well and they kind of pride themselves on because we talked about this earlier, either not letting them touch you in the first place or if they do touch you, make it so it's not going to affect you as much as your touch affects them. We talked about like the framing, like having a good strong foundation, uh, working on those different longer strikes to kind of keep somebody at bay keep them from hitting you. And if they do touch you, make it so it doesn't hurt you as much as it hurts them. But now, Seth, if I'm so far away, if you keep a long distance, that means that they're farther away from you, but you're farther away from them too. Yes, that's correct. But one of the good things that karate does, and one of the things that Stephen Wonderboy Thompson does a fantastic job of, is blitzing. So this is kind of more of a sport karate thing, uh, like a Lyoto Machida Shotokan type deal, or like a, a world kickboxing thing, whatever you want it to be. Hey, bag, can you stop moving? You're throwing me off. So being able to come in and being able to throw these strikes here and being able to come in with a flurry, coming in with, uh, it's somewhat of like a controlled chaos of being able to come in and just throw strikes, kick, and then back away. And I say controlled chaos because you're controlling the chaos. The chaos is happening, but it's when you want it to happen. That's essentially what blitzing is. Now, when you learn how to blitz and you learn how to keep your hands up and have good strikes that go along with it, being able to move forwards and punch is something a lot of people don't do well. Now, we somewhat talked about this earlier, but we also kind of didn't. The start-stop that karate has. Being able to control your body to a point where you're going and then you stop really hard. Now, when you do that, you not only give your muscles that push, but you have to contract them at the same time. And having that different control of your muscles, whether it's like you're finding yourself kicking and you realize that you have to stop because they're too far away and being able to stop it on a dime, hold it. Those kind of different body manipulations that we do all the time when we practice give you a large amount of help. You also have to learn when to let go with your strikes. But we talked about that earlier. If you haven't yet, go back like four videos from this one and I talk about the 10 mistakes that karate guys make when it comes to sparring. But that's not what we're talking about today. So being able to start, stop, 
Like when it comes to blocking especially, we talked about the reaching and how some people reach for blocks. I can reach for blocks if I know when to stop. So if I go like this, and that hand's not coming this way anymore, if I can go start stop, like I can block in different directions, whether it's this way, right? And I have different motions because just as important as it is to get that arm out there, it's just as important to pull it back just as fast. Now, number nine doesn't happen out there as much. It sort of does, but it's more so of a mindset thing. A lot of the virtues that karate teaches are things like patience, honesty, respect. So those are gonna be ways that help you either out there or in here. So as people start to get acclimated to different types of kickboxing sparring, you're gonna get punched in the face. That patience, that respect, and those other values are gonna be what keep you from like going and like swinging hard, and then you're gonna get beat up worse. Or just not putting yourself in that situation out there. Now that kind of doesn't talk about sparring as much, and it's kind of like a, man, that's kind of cheating, but eh, so. Now with all that in mind, our last one is probably the most important one. I said the kicks were the most important one earlier, but this one's the most important one. It has something to do with you a little bit deeper in a sense. Spinning attacks! Yeah, so uh, that's things that karate people are good at when they start to transition into sparring, fighting, anything that's outside of their comfort zone. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you comment. Turn on the notifications. And if you don't subscribe, bro, I will karate you right in your neck. I will karate your neck so hard that you like just look like this. You just look like head and shoulders. Not the shampoo, though. If that's understood, then we can be okay. Should I, should I have to karate you? No? Okay. All right. I trust you. Just uh, make sure you subscribe right now. Just subscribe. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not, I'm not even gonna do one thing. Uh, just subscribe, we have no problems. Are you, are you hitting the backspace? Ah!